What's fair to the President of the United States? Do you believe that starting an impeachment inquiry or impeachment proceedings would be justified on what you understand the facts to be? Would that be fair to the President of the United States? Oh, I, I think it would be fair on the basis of the Mueller report. It seems to me that was clearly a referral from Bob Mueller to Congress uh, for Congress to use its constitutional powers and I think actually do its constitutional duty to examine that report and make a determination about whether or not the president uh, should be impeached. Now, I look at that obstruction section of, of the report, and it seems to me that there are at least six out of those 10 um, specifications of obstruction that ser would serve as a basis to impeach uh, President Trump. What do you think about process? Do you think it should just keep going along this way in terms of what they're doing? Yes, they're fighting um, with uh, the AG right now. You're no stranger to that game, but they're fighting with him. Should they keep it this way, or do you believe that impeachment is the right route, or do you agree with Nancy Pelosi that it's the wrong route? I, I think in the short term, I would keep going in the way that they are, mm. um, have really significant oversight. I, I'd speed up the process, though. You know, let, let, let's send out those subpoenas. Let's get those response times, cut those down, um, and speed up the process so that we form up uh, what is to, to happen. And if we don't get responses right. from um, people in the cabinet, if there is, in fact, stonewalling by the Trump administration, um, then I think you have to move to an impeachment inquiry. But that's where you are. I'm I'm not saying that uh, I'm not calling for anything, but that's where you are. They send out the subpoenas. The AG and the other uh, interested parties say no. So they go to court. They get a couple of quick rulings. I was surprised at how uh, fast the rulings was. It cost me a couple of drinks. But now they will appeal those rulings, so it's not over yet. If they were to go impeachment inquiry, do the judges accelerate the process? Because there are no additional powers under impeachment than re regular oversight. Well, actually, Congress, in using uh, its impeachment authority, uh, is actually at its height when it comes to uh, the power that the House of Representatives has. And I, I think if you went to an impeachment inquiry, you would probably see uh, the judicial branch a little more responsive than mm. perhaps it would be um, in, in pure oversight. But I will say that judges have been moving uh, pretty, pretty quickly. I think that we want to move as quickly as we can, establish the facts as soon as we can, and then make a determination about whether or not the president um, should be impeached. And I don't really think that political considerations should be a part of that, uh, that determination. Do you think that the current attorney general has followed uh, that last uh, comment that you just made there, that political consideration should not be part of the administration of justice? Well, I, I got to tell you that I uh, expected a lot more from Bill Barr. I assured people when he was nominated that he was an institutionalist and that he would be a person who would follow um, the law, follow the norms that have governed the way in which attorneys general have always conducted themselves. And I have to say, I've been sorely disappointed. I think that he has protected the president. I think he has mischaracterized uh, the Mueller report. He is not cooperating um, with, with Congress in a way that he clearly should. Um, I said in a tweet that I don't think on the basis of his performance that he is fit to be uh, attorney general of the United States. People hit you with the same stick, A.G., as you know. They say, well, Holder was Obama's wingman. And what about the Fast and the Furious? And he fought all those subpoenas, too. They just settled the case like two weeks ago um, for, some, for some of that uh, litigation. What did you do as A.G. to President Obama that you believe is better than what we're seeing now? Well, when it comes to Fast and Furious, the thing for which I was held in contempt, and I would say inappropriately held in contempt, uh, we turned over 7,000 documents. Uh, I testified 10 times before the Senate and before the House uh, talking about Fast and Furious, and we made available all of the witnesses that Congress wanted to hear from, from within the Justice Department. The only things that we held back were deliberative materials, materials that talked about how we were going to respond to Congress, not with regard to uh, the substance. All those documents were ultimately released by uh, Attorney General Sessions, and guess what? There was nothing in there of any significance that we were, were holding back. We were fighting for a principle, the question of making sure that um, deliberations could occur within the executive branch out of the sight of the legislative branch. But uh, the total way in which uh, Barr and other members of the Trump administration uh, have refused to turn over documents, refused to testify, uh, is inconsistent with the duties that they have as members of the cabinet. Let's talk about this a little bit more. And also, I want your take on what you think must happen in this upcoming election. 
What do you think has to be the state of play? What do you think has to be the priority of message and messenger on the Democrat side? There are other things. It's a rare opportunity to have you here. I'm going to milk it. Stay with me through the break, okay. please. Back now, we have more with former AG Eric Holder. It's good to have you. You know, people talk about you a lot on this show, and now we're having the opportunity to talk to you. I just want to give you uh, one more opportunity on something. When people say, don't look at Bill Barr, as some kind of unusually deferential animal in that office. That's how they all are. Holder was the same way. Respond to your critics. Well, that's not true at all. Um, you know, I uh, ran the Justice Department in a way that it should be run, uh, independent of the White House, making determinations uh, based on the facts and the law that was presented to me. I made determinations and decisions that were not necessarily supported by people um, in the White House. When I made the determination, for instance, to reopen the inquiry into the CIA abuses with regard to enhanced interrogation techniques, that was not something that was supported by people in the White House. An independent attorney general is critical to our system. All right, I appreciate you putting that on the, on the record. Uh, it'll be helpful going forward. I can guarantee that. So, Jared Kushner, he gives this interview today. Um, he talked about a couple of things that should have been layups. They weren't. The first one, I want your take on. I want to play you the sound. He was asked about whether or not he's ever seen the president be racist or do anything racist. He said, absolutely not. Never. Known him a long time. He said, okay, then what about this? Listen to this. Was birtherism racist? Um, look, I wasn't really involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Um, look, I know who the president is, and I have not seen anything in him that is racist. So again, I was not involved in that. Did you wish he didn't do that? Uh, like I said, I was not involved in that. That was a long time ago. How does he not say, yes, it was racist, he shouldn't have done it, he learned from it, he's moved on from it? How did he not give that answer? What's your take on that? Well, I don't think he can give that answer. There's no way that he could say of his father-in-law that in any instance um, he had done something that was racist in nature, though I think, and this is a word that I am very reluctant to use, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, but I have to say that with regard to that whole birther, um, that whole birther controversy, that that had race um, at its base. And uh, President Trump knew what he was doing when he talked about President Obama um, in that way. Why Kushner doesn't have the uh, ability to do that, I think, is, is obvious. He, he simply cannot say, agree w with the notion that I think is just factually there, that uh, his father-in-law engaged in an activity that was inappropriately based in, uh, in race. You know, I, I get calls on a regular basis from people who know him and are around him in the White House and say, you know, he's a nice guy. Give him a break. He's trying. He's trying to help out his father-in-law. It just doesn't work for me because it's not like he stepped into the mom-and-pop shop uh, that the Trump family was running. You know, he's up there in the seat of power uh, being asked to do things he has no experience in. But one thing he should know by now, A.G., is they ask him in the interview, well, if you got another email uh, like that one you got during the campaign to get dirt from the Russians, uh, what would you do? He says... I don't know. Now, doesn't his security clearance mandate that he report something like that, let alone his common sense? Uh, both in terms of your security clearance, your common sense, and your fundamental patriotism. If a foreign power offers to give you information that would be useful in a campaign, I would think that the reflexive, instinctive reaction that you would have would be to call the FBI, to call somebody um, in authority, somebody in law enforcement, somebody in the national security um, sphere to report that, not to take advantage of it. And the fact that he is unable to say that even now um, is really kind of, kind of breathtaking. Mm. It, it's really kind of breathtaking. Looking at the Democrat field of 23-24 uh, right now, you wishing you jumped in? Um, <laughs> there are times when I have pangs uh, uh, about that. But uh, one, one thing I would say is that if I were running, I would be signing this pledge, which is what we're asking all of the candidates to have do. Have any Sign done this it? pledge. Uh, we have gotten favorable responses from a number of them, uh, but we want them to sign this pledge to end gerrymandering and to end map manipulation. My expectation is that all of them will sign it, but we're also asking regular citizens to sign this pledge, um, this pledge as well. Well, that'll be easy because they don't know what get, you know, citizens want the game to be fair. When you're in it, then you start to get things. You said favorable responses. Has anyone yes. signed the pledge yet? 
Uh, no one has signed the pledge yet. We have not actually formally given the pledge, physically okay. given the pledge to anybody. Um, but I'm sure we have heard in their rollouts, uh, to be fair, Mayor Pete certainly talked about this. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders has talked about this. Beto O'Rourke um, talked about this, all during their, their rollouts. We want people to be uh, more vociferous, more vocal about the need for a fair redistricting what about process Biden? in 2021. Uh, I'm sure that the vice president will sign this as well. I know him, and I'm confident that he'll sign this pledge. What do you think of that field? It's a good field. You know, um, I, I think we've got a lot of qualified candidates. Too many? Um, I, I, we, well, yeah, at this point, I, you know, we have too many now. I, I think, you know, through the debates and through the Iowa, New Hampshire caucuses, it'll get winnowed down, I think, pretty dramatically. I think there are probably seven, eight people there who have a, a realistic chance. 